Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel. What we're we looking at today? In a minute, we're going to look at the Ducati Multistrad 1200S. This is a tall girl. Believe you me, my little short legs. So we're not even going to go how tall it is, but I'm 5'8 and I'm on tippy toes. 1200cc engine from 1198 from a very sports bike. They toned it down a little bit. 20 litre tank, top speed of 145. There's modes on here that will drive you mad. I'm not going to go in that on this little one look around, but there's other videos, and I may do one later on, urban sports, and enduro, and touring modes, and you go from 100 brake to 150 brake. This one, which you can just about see, has got a sports exhaust. It's loud, I will start up in a minute, but not for long, the neighbours hate me as it is. So, these are beautiful bikes, but I would say I have to be tall. I said I'm 5'8", 29 leg, 30 leg, and I'm just about there. This has got an Ollins sports um, suspension on it so <laughs> even better for riding it's been tuned to about 14 stone there's lots of things you can do to these bikes are they really really good well at present minute with the sports exhaust and it's decatted i've got to say it's a bit lurchy i'm used to fours this is a twin um, i'm used to pulling back a bit which it doesn't it hammers along you up and down the gears an awful lot so it's something i've got to get used to the heated grips on here are the nuts but again, complicated to start. The key, look at the size of that bloody key. I mean, it's a monster. And, little key. It is keyless, we'll have a look at that. Ducati's control center. Here is your start button, which is oddly, that's not it. <laughs> this does your heat grips when you're running, but it's a starter. So you flick this down, and you flick it down again, and then we get this lovely dash really is a very good heads up display and to start pull the clutch in and you have to push that down but as i said we're not going to do that turn it off again obviously as well this has got a steering lock which you have to turn sideways and then push this down and it does it under here there is actual push button if the key goes wrong i guess and there's some sort of pin code again i haven't looked too much into it this has got a tinted screen they come with clear i don't mind good old adjustable stuff it's funny for a bike that has got this much technology and it decided to have these little windy bits this is a 2010 model um, I believe they changed it in 2015 so you can grip this and pull up and down but it does make me laugh if it's not electric controls this is again for the enduro up and down and then setting and you've got your horn obviously your high beam and clutch as I said I've got my lazy wrist here brake but this start system and gun system is uh, definitely um, high tech even with a petrol cap, this one's got a key operated one, and this one obviously is electric. 10 seconds of turning the dash off, you have to be able to open this. If not, you've got to turn it on and off again. In there is the very nice Ollins shock I was just mentioned about. I did wonder what this handle was for when I first got this bike, and it's actually to help you lift it onto the centre stand. But I'm used to having these. I do like the, uh, I don't know what it is really, mud guard I guess? It wasn't on when I first got it because it just adjusted the chain. Looks from behind, I said, this does have panniers in the back box. But without it, it looks very sporty. Chain driven. Got crash bobbins there. Engine. Tiny really. But it doesn't have to chuck out a lot of poke. Again, Ollins front suspension. Twin Brimbro brakes there. I think it'd be nice if they were painted. Underneath this carbon fibre section is the twin belts. They have to be changed to 27,000 miles. I see a video, they're not that hard to do. I may give it a go. Good old crash bungs. As I said, it's been decatted. And here is an absolute crazily noisily exhaust. I will start it in a minute. As for the tyres, he chose Michelin Power Super Sport. Very sticky. I must admit, road work today, they were like glue. See very very comfortable and the rear seat however pillion seat I don't know if you watched my video on the BMW but I don't think my missus who's four foot ten would ever be able to get on this bike if I can barely pegs in the right place but you see a long way from the floor but this engine as you can see where it's from I'm not gonna try and pronounce it maybe an Italian voice sir. no that's enough of that this is a race engine they've toned down redone and stuck it in here. It's got a lot of power. But looks wise, 
she does look like she owns the road. I'm not quite sure about jet black. I think I'll let a little bit of colour on it, but that may be something I'll do later. And from the front, I say she's so tall. I was behind a Mondeo today and I could see clearly over it. Indicators are in the mirrors, it's quite snazzy. She just looks lovely. Let me just go around it slowly. I think whatever angle you look at this bike, it just looks gorgeous. I do love the single swinging arm on the back. You get to see the wheel. I want to put red trim around there. <laughs> Maybe some of you may not agree, but that's what I want to do with it. Nice bit of red trim and a few red decals. I think it was tee this bike off lovely. I weren't sure what to do with the tail tidy though. I've seen some people that put the registration plate on the bumper, as it were, and then lift the back up. Great having a side stand and a centre stand. Let's compare this baby to the BMW GS. Well, on the BMW GS, it was heavy. A big busted bird, she was heavy, and that was the ordinary GS, not even a GSA. This weighs 220 kilos, 218, 250, keep saying up and down, dry and wet. But honestly, so much lighter, so much more agile. I throw it on the side stand, don't need the handle. It's so easy to chuck around. Being so tall, still works well. This morning, when I got out of the garage, used my FJR, maybe watch that video, and the BMW video and the VFR 1200 video, look, I've got lots of videos on there. But however, compared to the old FJR, I threw this out the garage and hit my leg because I pushed it off the stand. I've got the VN 1600, another great video to watch. But again, nothing for this. I'll be able to ride this all year round. It's a great sports bike, a bit of power, and yet enough to endure the winter as well. The luggage is not the biggest. Look at me, it's dwarfing me, this bike is. The luggage is not the biggest, but it's great having panniers. They've got bags inside them as well, and a back box as well, it's just great. Um, when I brought it to work this morning, bought a great big chain. Don't want it going walkies, do I? Although, they are brilliant bikes. Hey, as promised, hold your ears, guys. Clutch in, push down. Flick up. I've always said in my videos, I want to be seen and heard. In this Ducati, you really do get seen and heard. Great lights from the front, also got daylight. If anyone said I didn't see you coming, mate, well, they'd be lying. You seem to be dwarf them as well when you're sitting so high. So, there's a brief teaser of this little bike. I'll do another one on location. I'll go a bit more into the touring, endurance, sport, and so on modes. I'll have the panniers on in the back box as well. I can fit the missus on the back, I will do. Otherwise from that, as I said before, check out my videos. There's loads on there now. Don't know about the peds, but there's some nice big bikes on there. Keep watching, I'll keep making them. And please like, share and subscribe.